Hello darts fans, welcome back to the channel. We've had a very very busy week of darts news from both the Players Championship and Premier League. So, without further ado, let's get straight into the video and take a look at some of the best stories from the past few days. Let's start by looking at night 2 of the Premier League from the stunning Mercedes-Benz Arena in Berlin, where Michael van Gogh won after close wins against Aspinall, Smith and Littler. But what I want to take a look at is the setup used by Snakebite Peter Wright, who currently sits bottom of the table as one of only two players with back-to-back -back quarter-final exits. On close inspection, it's clear that Wright was using a set of Michael Van Gogh and Exact Arts, which he'd scrappily painted with the Scottish colours. But the most interesting and strange part was his points choice as he was using Swiss Storm points made by Target Darts. That's a strange decision, as Wright is a Red Dragon player, and surely they have enough points for him to choose from, rather than him having to use one from another manufacturer. Target even made fun of the choice, tweeting an advert for the points just after the Wright game finished. It's not even the first time Wright's used those points, as he was also spotted using them almost a year ago. We are very used to Wright switching, but seeing him use equipment from a different manufacturer in high profile TV games is just crazy. The Pro Tour started this week with two players championship events and also two Euro Tour qualifiers, which all took place on weekdays. In a big change, all the players championship events are taking place on weekdays this year, bringing an end to the gradual shift from the weekend. Last year, the events were split evenly between the week and weekend. In 2022, 17 were on the weekend and 13 in the week, and pre-COVID, it was 21-9. The total shift will obviously have had a big effect on many of the lower-ranked players who may have had to give up jobs as they just can't afford to take that many days off. Many fans, therefore, expected many players to withdraw ahead of events, but ahead of the first two, only four players were scheduled to be absent, including Ronnie Hybrex, the world number 86. Ronnie lost his previous tour card in 2019 and was then unsuccessful at Q School for three years in a row before regaining it at Q School last year. Therefore, Ronnie's in the second year of his tour card and will have to have a much better year if he wants to hold on to it at the end of the year. However, it's got off to a bad start for him as due to his job at a warehouse, he had to withdraw from the first block of events as he only has 24 days of leave a year. This is a clear example of how the changes are affecting lower ranked players. He will likely be forced to miss many more blocks of action throughout the year, but this one will be particularly sour as he's missing the first two Euro Tour qualifiers, one of which is for the Belgian Darts Open, his home event in Visa. Despite the challenges, we should see Ronnie at least a few events later in the year as he didn't hand in his tour card, which, when the midweek change was first announced, he said that he was considering. Michael van Gerwen was also absent for the first few Pro Tour events, but for a very different reason. After his Berlin Premier League win, Mighty Mike only had a few hours sleep and then rushed to Disneyland Paris to spend some time with his family. MVG and his family clearly love Disney as they've been a few times in the past and back in 2018, they even visited the one in Shanghai ahead of the Shanghai Masters World Series event. Adrian Lewis also withdrew from the first event, meaning he's continuing his nearly year-long break from the sport, but like Hybrex, he didn't hand in his tour card, so we could see him at least once this year. One potential tournament which could see his return is the upcoming UK Open, as Adrian is scheduled to be at Butlin's Minehead on finals day for an exhibition. He could play in the UK Open, which saw his last major win back in 2014, as all tour card holders automatically qualify. The final player to withdraw was new tour card holder Tim Walters, who apparently was unable to play due to the imminent arrival of his second child. Last week, Walters was signed by Unicorn Darts, and alongside their other recent signings, it shows an obvious change in the company's strategy. They've also recently signed Ashley Coleman, Aidan Kirk, Jacob Gwynn, Tom Sykes, and Darren Beveridge. In the past, Unicorn focused on the creme de la creme and would mainly sign elite Premier League challenging players. In a past video, I covered how they lost many of those players. So, it's great to see them change their strategy and focus on some of the lower ranked players as it's now clear that brands like Target, Winmore and Red Dragon are the go-to for the top players. Red Dragon player Gerwin Price did turn up to the first Pro Tour event and he began with a ton plus average and sudden death leg win over Carol Sedlicek. 
He then averaged an excess of 110 in a round 2 6 2 win over Matty Dennant to set up a board final with Brendan Dolan. It was Dolan who beat Price at Ali Pali and he got the better start in this game, going 4 2 up. Both players were averaging 95 at that time before the game suddenly disappeared from Dark Connect before its conclusion. Price later revealed the reason for this as he pulled out midway through the game due to cold conditions in the venue which he called pathetic and amateur. Fans may be very critical of that decision but during the day it was clear that many other players were also cold as they were rubbing and blowing on their hands. Luke Humphreys and Chris Dobie both tweeted calling the conditions freezing and poor which for a pro tour event isn't really on. Around this time of the year players should really be prepared and take hand warmers but the PDC should do the most they can to ensure that the conditions are acceptable. The freezing conditions at Players Championship 1 likely leveled the playing field between the elite and lower ranked players as we saw just one of the top 16 seeds make it to the last 16, Germany's Ricardo Piotrzewska. One of the big scalps on that day came in round 2 where world number 62, Ian White, whitewashed world champion and world number 1 Luke Humphreys who averaged just 81.37. That was likely just a blip due to the freezing conditions and in a tweet replying to someone highlighting his tough start to the year, Luke said that he felt, as the world champion, every little thing he's doing is getting criticised. That's just what the spotlight does. Luke Littler wasn't put off by the cold on that day and fired in one of three nine darters on the day on the way to his first Pro Tour title. That win came after Luke was on TikTok Live at around 1am the night before, showing just how relaxed he is. On the following day, Luke beat number 9 seed Danny Knoppert before losing out in a deciding leg to Radek Zaganski. Over recent months, Zaganski's shown that he's a capable player, despite what some news reports might make you think. This reporting is just terrible, especially after Zaganski won a Pro Tour title last year. On that day, no players complained about it being too cold, but Michael Smith tweeted saying that it was ridiculously hot, making it hard for him to breathe. Whilst that could be a joke, it's likely that the PDC installed some sort of heating solution after Monday's incident. Gerwin Price responded to Smith's comments with a laughing emoji, saying he was glad he gave the event a miss. It was Gary Anderson who was victorious on Tuesday, taking his 50th PDC title. It's great to see Gary continuing his top form and showing that it wasn't just a flash in the pan last year. Thanks for watching this news update. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe as it really helps the channel out. Also, click the bell icon to turn on notifications so that you don't miss a new upload as soon as it comes out.